In the beginning of the lesson, we looked at this question about finding the magnitude of the resultant and the angle between the resultant and the 10 pound force. And that required, from the previous lesson, the parallelogram and the vector here. And I like to take this obtuse triangle out and we have 10, 13, and this obtuse angle is 149.5. And this is 13. Oh, I see. This isn't 13. This is. That's this side over here. And through a combination of the law of cosines to get the magnitude of the resultants is 22.2. And once you have that, you can use the law of sines to get the angle between the resultant and the 10 pound force to be 17.3 degrees. Well, I wanna show you how using component form, we could revisit and do the same question faster. So here's the same question. That vector, this one down here, the horizontal one, in component form, it's 10 comma zero. Magnitude of 10 is horizontal. The, um, the slanted one here, its components are 10 cosine 30.5, 13 sine 30.5. That's because if I were to make this right angle, the, the, the force itself would be like the hypotenuse of the right triangle. This bottom line is not the 10 pound force, it's underneath, it's like that. The 10 pound force is probably something like that. Anyway, this is 13 sine 30.5 and 13 cosine 30.5. Those are the components. So I can write the vector this way. Well now, adding them together is very easy because you add these two things together algebraically by just adding the horizontal component and adding the vertical components. So these become 13 cosine 30.5 plus 10 and when you add to zero, it stays the same. So it's comma 13. And that's the component form of the resultant. Well, to get the magnitude, I'm gonna just call this U and V. So this is U plus V. So to get the magnitude of U plus V, I'm going to turn these things, just stick them into my calculator, and this ends up being about 21.2, and this ends up being about 6.6, .6, just to... So to get the magnitude, I'd use the Pythagorean theorem, which is the formula for magnitude of a vector if it's already in component form and I get the 22.2, which matches up with what I got using the law of cosines before. And then to get the, um, to get the angle, well, the angle is even easier because you do the angle with tan inverse. And this thing is the 6.6, .6, and here's the uh, 21.2. I need the point two here. And you pop that into the calculator, you get 17.29. So notice with the law of cosines and law of sines, it was pretty involved. It would take a while to do it this way. But if I do it with a component form, it's a little bit faster.